All right. Uh, well, good morning or good evening, depending on where in the world you are right now. Uh, it is a beautiful kind of blue gray sky today in Seattle just after 9 a.m. Uh, and now I'm going on my Fraser Crane rant, so I will move it along. Uh, I am joined today uh, by a colleague um, that is an old favorite here. Uh, his name is Ty. Ty, if you'd like to make a quick introduction of yourself. Yes. Hello. Happy to be here. So excited. Excellent. And and Ty um, has been with us before. So if you've joined uh, previous office hours, you've probably heard his voice. Uh, he's a solutions consultant that works with the AppSheet product. And working from home co-host today is Max with him. Uh, Ty, would you like to add any commentary about your co-host? I would. That um, I had to close my office door because he had heard about this webinar and uh, he would <laughs> definitely be interrupting us. What uh, we've been calling the cat tax, and uh, don't want that to happen while we're covering the material today. So I've uh, given him some food, and he's uh, resting and having his morning nap as we speak. Excellent. Uh, and it looks like that's one of his favorite activities too, which is great. Um, so, and for those that have not had a chance to meet me before, uh, my name is Jennifer. Um, you see me on the forums quite a bit, um, but I typically host and, and run our webinar sessions. Um, we are in work from home, home mode still here in Seattle, which is why uh, we've listed our work from co home co-hosts. Um, my fur child, Roxy, is, is also napping in the corner too. So if you hear any jingle jangle or any barking or obnoxious, please pet me noises, that's what that's about. So now that the important stuff is out of the way, let's get to some content. Uh, so in terms of our agenda today, we'll review a few educational resources to help you folks on board who are new to the product, uh, have a couple announcements to make. And then today we're going to discuss um, image, working with images and videos uh, for your AppSheet applications. Ty has done some really great work in this area, which is why I wanted to invite him. And we're going to do a deep dive on this topic. Uh, for those with questions, you can certainly add them to the chat, uh, but we highly encourage everyone to post your questions in the link out to the community forum um, for two reasons. One, it's a great place to keep the conversation going after this session has ended. It allows other people to see the questions that are being asked. Uh, it also adds some visibility to the questions that you have. Um, others in the space might be working on something that you're inquiring about or have a solution that we actually haven't thought of before. And so there's a very rich uh, network of individuals there. So we do encourage you to post your questions on that community link. All right. All right, so for those that are new to AppSheet, um, if you haven't built any apps before or if you've just started within the past few weeks, I always like to point um, to this particular resource. It is a support article in our help center. This is also posted on the community forum we just mentioned. If you search for learn how to use AppSheet, this list of resources will come up for you. Um, I recommend starting with what's called AppSheet Academy, which is our 90-minute uh, free Udemy course. Um, it gives you a great overview of some of the topics we'll touch on today, as well as several others, but do start there. And for those of you that English is not your first language, we have this really phenomenal crowdsourced uh, non-English resource list. Um, I've seen everything from Russian to Thai to Japanese. So do check this out uh, for both yourself and your global customer base as well if, if you're a partner of ours. All right, so Ty, we're gonna start talking about uh, one of your favorite topic areas. Um, so in Fundamentals of AppSheet, if you joined us a few weeks ago, we talked about data and uh, star schemas and things of that nature, and I can post a link to that session. This is building off of that a little bit, and it, we're going to discuss you know, leveraging certain types of data and by default certain column types uh, to work with your application to create a really rich environment. Love it. All right. So uh, Ty, I've been kind of talking at people for a few moments. Do you want to do a quick overview on column and data types? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you can see on the screen here, there's a pretty healthy list of what AppSheet calls data types. If you have a database or data background, you might be used to some of these types like uh, number or text, um, that kind of thing. Um, from a database point of view, there are archetypes of you know what's a, a piece of text or otherwise known as a string and what kinds of numbers are there like integers versus numbers with decimal points and so forth. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, that's, that's not a problem. From the app sheet point of view, we have support for all of that but then we've extended that support. So this list of data types is you know, uh, pretty healthy and an extension of the world of data. And the reason for that is due to our mobile support. So you'll see things like lat long, um, which you know, in conjunction with the app sheet mobile support and the mobile app would you know, pick up your current latitude and longitude from the Android or iOS device. Um, things like Signature, which integrate on a mobile device and let you use your finger to actually put your initials into a field and actually draw. Uh, things like URL support, whereby you know if you uh, data enter a URL into an app, you know will automatically create um, the URL button that takes you to that. Um, an image and video, which is I think what we're going to talk about most today. And in the case of imaging, on again, on the mobile device, it would actually allow you to access the photo library of your Android and iOS device, or even uh, access the camera on those devices. In the case of desktop, you know, a Chrome or a Firefox or, you know, a browser on your laptop, um, we don't access the camera uh, through the, the browser due to some just security limitations there. So in today's demonstration, because we're on a, a webinar here, you'll see us uh, possibly upload an image, but just imagine in your mind's eye that on a phone, you also have access to the camera. Uh, and so again, in summary, this is a very extensive list um, that's longer, uh, in other words, that you might be used to you know, from a data or database point of view. And again, it's because of our mobile support uh, that we do these kinds of things. Yeah, thank you for that, Ty. And I think it's really important to highlight um, what you mentioned about mobile versus tablet versus desktop. Um, one thing that we always kind of pride ourselves on here at AppSheet is you build one application and you can use it across multiple um, devices, which is incredibly powerful. In some houses, you have to build several different applications depending on the device you want to use it on, or there's a lot of additional lift with refactoring and things like that. Um, so th that's a really important um, piece that Ty just pointed out. You know, take a picture on your mobile phone, and someone in an office uh, working from a desktop computer can access that information. So thank you for pointing that out. All right. So um, in terms of displaying images and videos in your app, this is something that we'll dive into more when we pull up our apps to demonstrate. Um, but just a few kind of tips here. Uh, gallery, detail, and card view are all fantastic ways to display your information uh, or your data, excuse me. These are all what's known as view types. And again, we've touched on this in a recent webinar. If you're interested in learning more about UX view types, we can certainly link to that. Um, in the in the notes afterwards. Uh, your column types influences the field that is visible. Um, this can be an image, a signature field, um, this can be a video field, you name it. But um, we'll review that again in just a moment. And then you can grant users the option to add or upload their own image contributions based on the user's role, um, which again is a topic we've discussed previously. If you have questions, we can link to that as well. Uh, Ty, anything to add in terms of displaying images and videos for now? No, I think that's a great summary. Um, you know, the you can see on the screen there, the, the deck view here allows you to create a circular or square or full-sized, you know, uh, representation of the image. And uh, we'll show you in a moment, you obviously get instant navigation to drill into each record and possibly see the image, you know, in full-size mode, and even download it to your device uh, if needed. Excellent, thank you for that. All right, so um, capturing image-related data. This is a very simple explanation <laughs> of some of the capabilities of um, how to intake data into your device. 
imagine you've built a um, like a delivery tracker or something like that. A signature field allows you to input, um, in this case, a great representation of the name Justin uh, in a signature field. <laughs> you can, as we've discussed, add photos on your mobile device or tablet. Um, again, embed videos, markup images. So if you uh, work in surveying or in manufacturing um, and you're doing, let's say, an inspection on site, you can take an image and then you can draw on top of that image to mark if like a tire's out or if a wheel isn't working on an assembly line or something like that. Um, there's a number of possibilities and use cases, far too many to list here. Um, so we'll dive a little bit deeper. All right, so Ty, I'll let you uh, talk a little bit more on storing images and videos before we dive into our samples today, or examples sure. today, excuse me. Um, and you touched on this just a moment ago, but if, you, if you'd like to dive a little deeper. Yeah, so at the heart of this is, um, you know, your data source, right? So underneath AppSheet, uh, you've built an app and it's connected to Google Sheets or a SQL server or a SQL cloud data source. Um, and the storage of the image uh, by default is in the original place that you signed up. So if you go to AppSheet.com and you sign up with your uh, Google account, um, we've... Uh, then started to use your Google Drive. If you signed up with a Microsoft account, we've started to use your Microsoft OneDrive. And if you were to take a picture on your phone and then upload that through your app, the file and the image would end up in Google Drive or OneDrive. However, you can see on the screen here that you know column I in that screenshot for this National Parks uh, data set is actually referring to just you know a URL and a web location you know out there in the wild, and in fact that's sort of the the magic of how this all works is that nothing prevents you from having your app uh, point at you know the equivalent of remote images that are out there on the internet. Um, all of that is is supported, so your images could be local on your Google Drive or remote um, all in the same piece of uh, table data in, or in the same app. Um, it's a very handy and elegant way to manage image support and video support and that kind of thing. Yeah, so why don't we take a look at some source data? Yeah. All right, so we have pulled up a, this is one of our really popular uh, actually sample apps. Um, since we're all in lockdown still, it's nice to imagine what the outdoors look like, <laughs> which is part of the reason I selected this particular application to show. So um, Ty, this is outside, if you haven't seen it in a while. Uh, I, all right. I, that's amazing. There, there's, an, there's an outside. There's an outside. Um, all right, so in for those that are kind of new to the platform, just a, a couple of quick pointers here. We are in uh, the app sheet editor. We've navigated to the data tab, a navigation tab on the left-hand side, and we are under tables right now. So a little trick um, that we all really, really like to, um, I don't wanna say exploit, but we definitely take advantage of quite a bit, so maybe exploit is the appropriate term, uh, is view source here. So if you click on view source, it will take you into your actual data source for this. And what Ty was referring to earlier, Ty, it was column I? Yeah. Yes. There's two, so, really, I or J, and they're yeah. both equivalent. So this title here of this column, that, and Ty, add, um, add commentary we'd like with yeah. this. Um, but image and photo, those are both telling app sheet um, the column type to identify with. When, with that data that's input into that column. Yeah. And by that I, that I mean, and I'm sorry, go ahead. No, keep going, this is great. I'll, I'll add some uh, you know, nuance in a moment. Yeah, so um, by that I mean, if you go to your columns and we've pulled up, so the name of this table is National Park, that's the view source we're viewing. If you click on columns, and again, you can see National Park here, you can see under this type area, a long list of column types, and this uh, pertains to that list we showed earlier in the in our presentation. Um, when we get down to this, would be column I. This would be column J. Um, you see image and photo here. This image column. Um, that's what's setting allowing your application to display the images that you see on the right hand side. 
Yeah, and just <clears throat> the nuance moment here, just for folks that are new, you do not have to call your column the word image. It's a convenience uh, in terms of telling AppSheet. If you name a column my image or image capture or uh, cat image, um, we have uh, some natural language processing and we're smart enough to you know, see the word image or photo in your data source and automatically pick the image data type. In point of fact, perhaps, you know, your column called image wasn't supposed to be a photo and it's actually supposed to be text. And that's very easy to change that. So the concept of, uh, you know, calling your column name something convenient uh, is entirely up to you, uh, the designer, but there are these nice uh, natural language moments where if you call something, uh, you know, URL, chances are we'll mark it as a URL field. and if you call something a total amount, the word total amount is your column name, chances are we'll mark that as a, a price or something like that. So it's just a convenience for, for you, the designer. So, and I went back in and changed um, one of the image fields to text. And I'm not certain if it's, which column would need to be changed? And this might be um, a poor example of, of what Ty was just mentioning, but um, I'm feeling determined to show. No, it's, the, I love the go. experimentation, yeah. Yeah, there we go. See, trial and error, that's the best way to learn this platform. Yeah. Um, there could be a thumbnail in there or who, any number of reasons why it didn't update. But Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, but we'll change this back to image because often what happens is it will break the app if it doesn't match. There we go. And you're seeing on the screen there for everybody watching, um, just sort of instant ease of editing and design. Um, <clears throat> yeah, all in real time. Yeah, love that. That's the, the best part about the experience is yeah. experimentation. Yeah. Um, see, and look, we've we've triggered a few um, little Chances errors are, here. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Chances are, if you just close the app and reopen it, it would probably fix itself. It's a kind of a, we, we probably had multiple versions open from multiple browser windows. So this is a pretty common, easy to fix item. Uh, yeah. You can just discard the changes or even do a hard refresh on the, the page might even fix it. Yeah. Um, so Ty, I'm going to jump really quickly just to an example of working with a video in yeah. an application, and then um, I'll pass it over to you. Uh, I know you have some um, some great, uh, slightly more advanced take on working with images and videos. Yep. Um, so again, this is another sample application that we have. Um, again, for those of you that are, are new to the platform, uh, our sample applications are you know, in a, in a sense, templates that you can experiment with, you can look under the hood, um, you can get a feel for the data structure to see how to build your own applications. Um, you can also copy and make your own edits. Um, so if you find something relatively similar to what you wanna build, feel free to copy that over and then you can adjust your column types, your naming conventions. Um, the sky's really the limit, but this is a good place to start, which is part of the reason why I like to highlight this. Um, but this particular sample application does um, do a great job of showcasing, you know, embedding videos. Uh, it's a little cheesy. Um, it's asking if I watch animated movies. Sure, why not? Um, Ty, when was the last time you went to a movie in the great outdoors? <laughs> uh, none of the above on the screen there. <laughs> uh. Uh, do you watch Pixar movies? Yes. All I right. Used to, All right. Um, great. So, and from here, you can now see that this is an embedded uh, video that's playing in a mobile application. Um, and I don't think any sound plays. From the web browser, it, it would play if your sound was turned up and uh, same thing from your mobile device. Um, typically with YouTube videos embedded, the default now is you know, seems like the audio is muted until you sort of go explicitly unmute. Um, yeah, anyways. Cool, great, thank you for that little tidbit. Um, all right, so we'll pause this and then Ty, I'm going to pass this over to you. Great. I feel like we should have um, some like sharing screen music. I always thought that'd be kind of fun. 
but we're we're not that advanced here just yet. Keep it simple. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to share my main screen, and you should all see the National Parks app again. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to cruise through just a few um, sort of big, uh, simple to advanced, uh, some few um, errata or miscellaneous items about image support. Now, right off the bat, uh, looking at the, let me actually do a hard refresh since uh, we were all looking at the US, US National Parks app together. Right off the bat, um, I'm going to upload a new national park that I didn't see in uh, the, the app here, which is the Washington Monument. Um, I have a Wikipedia page for that over here. Um, and so this URL, I'm gonna copy the image address just to sort of or showcase or even um, you know, showcase that it can be uploaded or it can be referred to remotely. So to prove that, I'm gonna create a new record and call this the Washington Monument. And it's uh, not in any of these lists, so I'm gonna actually add the value DC to the list. Um, I have not visited it. I'll worry about the location later and I'll worry about all this inf uh, information later. And for now, I'm just gonna leave the <clears throat> image and photo and, and description, uh, you know, I'll call this the capital and click save. And then let's just force it to save. The reason I'm doing that is I want to then go, just like Jennifer did, clicking on uh, view source uh, to go over to the Google Sheet. And we should now be able to verify at the bottom here that here's our Washington Monument field. And I have not, um, you know, added an image for it. So just, you know, by way of experimentation and, and demonstration, uh, handy searching here, I can now search for uh, Washington and there it is. Here's my last record. This time I'm going to edit and uh, actually just insert an image and I'll just randomly pick an image of bees that I happen to have, um, not for any reason <clears throat> except to show that what, when I do that, and again, you know, trigger the, the saving here, over here now we're gonna get a slightly different URL, right? So this sort of proves the point that an image column in AppSheet can uh, be, um, uh, you know, a remote URL or, you know, local to the to the Google Drive experience. Now, also of worth note is I'm not the owner of this Google Sheet. Um, I believe Jennifer is. And so I can't actually go, you know, start making major changes. I am allowed to see it, um, which is a really great side comment or, you know, side collaboration feature. But in point of fact, as the owner of the app, Jennifer can go to Google Drive and she'll find, you know, the app sheet directory. And underneath that, she'll find this uh, National Parks application directory or folder. And underneath that, she'll see a folder called National Parks Images. And that's, in fact, what we just did here as far as uh, updating that information. Now, because this is view only, I can't just copy a field and paste it here. It's literally not letting me do that. Um, and so at a later point, you know, Jennifer could come in here and change the Washington Monument and not use a local image, but instead use, you know, a URL from the internet. The behavior for AppSheet, however, is identical. So you can see here, you can have, you know, mixed content or mixed media from, from disparate locations. Um, a really nice way to prove that, I'm gonna, again, I'm cruising sort of left to right on the tabs on the top of the screen here, is uh, we created a, um, imaging app just for the office hours today. And in here are a bunch of, um, you know, placeholder images. These are actually generated when you choose to build an app from spec. You know, if you build an app from an idea. Uh, if I go view source on this one table called photo, I do have the ownership, right? I am in charge of this app. Uh, and in fact, once again, you can see remote locations, uh, the nounproject.com. In fact, I could click into that and it'll show me, it's very hard to see, but there's a, a transparent image of a, you know mountains and a sun there. Um, and if I scroll down though, you're seeing, <clears throat> hey, wait a second, some of these images are not remote. Some of them are actually you know, in my drive location. And in fact, let's go take a look at that drive location. So from this uh, data source, I'm gonna click on this handy, uh, shortcut that Google Sheets gives us, which opens up the <clears throat> place where the images are stored. 
And so by default, when you create you know, a new image called, or a new column called photo or cat, um, app sheet, and you, th you then take a picture with your phone or, or tablet and upload that image, uh, app sheet is going to create this whole location for you very nicely and very elegantly. And you can see at one point in the past, uh, I uploaded a, a picture of uh, another beehive here. And uh, also, kind of fascinating, at some point in the past, I created a new location. And we're going to talk about what that means right now. So if I go back to this app, <clears throat> there is a uh, default location for images. So here's my column called image. Um, and if I drill into its pencil icon, which allows you to change all kinds of things. Um, in the uh, slides that we showed at the beginning, Jennifer talked about, you know, permissions and should this, um, you know, uh, field be editable. And you can set up, you know, advanced expressions that could determine that Jennifer is allowed to edit the photo, but Ty's not, that kind of thing. But interestingly, if I, <clears throat> excuse me, click on the pencil icon here, one of the uh, items for a piece of data whose type is image is its location. And so if you're new to AppSheet, just by way of education, everywhere inside of AppSheet, you'll see this construct. This is called the expression assistant, um, and it's all over the place. It's on views, it's on columns, it's in workflows and actions, and it allows you to put in no code business logic. Um, so for example, at some point in the past, I said, hey, I, I don't want the default location for images. I want AppSheet to store my pictures in a directory called new location. Um, and it did so, right? And so earlier, just a moment ago, we saw this folder called new location. And it looks like, <clears throat> uh, you know, at some point I was uploading and experimenting on the 15th, uh, that's what, yesterday, and, uh, you know, worked through this example. Um, and again, just to prove it, I'm going to go ahead and say new location two, and I'm going to click save and then done, and then I'll save my app. And we're going to just walk through to prove this, this exercise works. Now I'm going to add yet another image and I'll call it new location. Um, while I'm doing this, you might imagine like, why would I do this? Uh, there's really not any one reason, uh, but perhaps you want to store pictures by year. Perhaps you want to uh, segregate them out by the, the audience or the end user. So I'm going to force the save here. And in a moment, if we go back to just the, there it is, there's our new location two created zero minutes ago. And if we go in there, there's the image I just uploaded again, zero minutes ago. Super handy, especially when you start to think about the following. If I go back into the, uh, uh, details for this column, and again, we've got this folder path. Nothing prevents you from having dynamic locations. Maybe I want the image location to be, you know, the current email or some user information or a column uh, in my in my data, right? So I want a different uh, location for anything. Really, there's no limit to the logic here. Um, the very powerful concept in terms of then storing all of that information out, you know, uh, in a very uh, dynamic manner on your storage. Uh, Jennifer, any thoughts or quick comments on that before we keep going? No, I was just going to say um, that was a whole bunch of really great knowledge dropped in a <laughs> short span. So if you folks have questions about um, what Ty was just talking about or want to dig a little deeper on that, especially the dynamic piece, drop a question and we'll be able to address it for you. Great. Yeah, and it uh, it gets even better. We're, we're sort of uh, just getting started here. There's a few more things to show. Um, yes, and so we've talked, you know, we've touched on video and I'm gonna sort of drill in on that a little bit. Um, the <clears throat> top question we get asked here at AppSheet is how come I can't upload a video from my mobile device inside directly into appsheet.com platform? And in fact, that's a true statement. Um, they're unlike a um, uh, photo where I come in here, again, on my phone, instead of a button to pick an image from the file system on your phone, you actually get access to the camera. 
Um, however, you cannot take a video or upload a video into AppSheet. And the simplest reason for that is historically and currently AppSheet um, it does not want to be in the, the business of uh, being a video management platform and storing you know, the equivalent of petabytes of video and um, trying to, to keep up with that as a legitimate service. Um, there are in fact numerous platforms out there that do that, Google, YouTube, obviously being um, the, the, the big one, right? Uh, That's but certainly, well known. Yeah, certainly not the only one. And, and honestly, it's, you know, just to be really direct with the audience, it's, it was never our intention to be a, a video throughput platform. Having said that, there's some very ingenious tricks you can do um, and the example uh, that Jennifer just showed as far as the movie survey is a great example of that. Um, this app as well is a great example of that. We'll be making sure this app is, is available uh, for anybody. The way you embed a YouTube video or any other video is really straightforward. It's just a piece of text. To then show it is a couple of calculated fields, what we call virtual fields, but you only really need one uh, video field. So if I went to YouTube and I just uh, pick, you know, the most uh, popular recommended video, it, it it truly doesn't matter which one I pick. But all I want is the sharing link here. I'm going to copy that link, and um, AppSheet and these calculations are going to take care of the rest. So I've got that link, and I'm going to go uh, just create a new record here. I'll call it Video Test, and I'm going to skip the imaging altogether. Uh, but what I'm interested in is this video field. I'm simply going to paste in the YouTube video and click Save. Now, what's happening, if we look at these calculations, video is a supported data type, and it expects to land on a remote URL that, that AppSheet knows how to understand and, and deal with. It turns out, in the case of, of YouTube videos, and I'll just sort of prove it here by, there's that original YouTube link. Um, this is a very handy, typical, uh, you know, formula that you can build in AppSheet. And basically, we want the embedded version of that YouTube video and the ID. We want this little string here or piece of text to get inserted and concatenated into a properly built uh, YouTube embed uh, link, basically. Um, so I'm going to click Cancel. I don't need to make this change. Uh, to prove it, if I go now, we have a, a, a view here on the in the emulator called videos, and most of these are in fact uh, broken, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, the the reason is this app is demonstrating both photos and videos simultaneously, and so all of the photos um, are great from the purposes of a photo, but all of the video and so forth is is empty in these records. If I go edit one of these existing photo records, you'll see the video field is empty. However, if we go back out to our list here and scroll to the very bottom, you'll start to see that there are a couple of examples. Here's one at some point in the past, uh, a video of funny cats and kittens, uh, including a thumbnail. So that's a picture of the video. And I'll explain what that is in a moment. Um, and then uh, here's this uh, last one, is the one I just added, I guess. Um, yep, glasses, and here's the thumbnail. Now, if you're curious about YouTube thumbnails, uh, there's a uh, mechanism to uh, get them. Uh, thumbnail URL, I think, is a good search. <clears throat> and this will get, here you go, get the thumbnail and, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, study there. But in point of fact, if we go back and look at that second virtual field, video thumbnail, thumbnail is the data type, which is basically a smaller image. Um, it's a different kind of calculation. And again, this is just from having studied how YouTube works. But now you can envision, <clears throat> to Jennifer's uh, point earlier, um, having a, a gallery, like in this case, it's uh, we're using the card view. Uh, in AppSheet. It's a special view type called card. Uh, you don't want the video in the card, but you do want a thumbnail of the video in the card. And then when you drill into that record, you want to be able to play the video accordingly. Pretty straightforward. That, uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> I was just going to say, so if you um, are, let's use an example of an educator, and you have an online class series that you want to run um, through your application, th these tricks that Ty is giving you here, 
this is a great way to execute on that. Also think employee onboarding, especially in uh, this all digital environment many of us are functioning in right now. Um, this, is, this is a great um, trick to know uh, to execute on, on that particular need. So thank you for yeah. highlighting that, Ty. That's that's exactly right. Um, you know, digital workplace and digital training series is a kind of a, a triviality. Just you know, the the key thing to remember here with video support is that we're not going to be in the business of uploading and managing you know petabytes of video. However, you can absolutely have a mechanism where uh, maybe you build a um, you know an app sheet workflow. Have you watched this video? And you click a button that says yes, I've reviewed this material, and you can start to track you know attendance and and you know verify you know audience participation and that kind of thing. Great suggestion. So keep going, shall we? Or do you have other thoughts or comments? Yeah, let's. Uh, I've got a couple of questions, but we can hold them to the end. So uh, why don't you keep going? Yeah, I'll uh, try to, to speed it up a little bit. And again, we'll make sure this Imaging Offers Hours app is available to you. Um, the next one I wanted to point out is a, a few errata or features around, you know, we showed location support. Um, it turns out that uh, you can also set default sizes for images. So from the UX section, you click on options. And then if you scroll down, uh, there's the ability to say, what should my image upload size be? And you should definitely, I'll sort of leave this as an exercise for the reader. But what I would recommend is use your mobile device, you know, build an app that has a really simple table with an image in it and start with full and see what it looks like on you know Google Drive after you've uploaded an image in full mode and then come back to your app and change it to medium or low and then take a second picture you know on a second record and upload that one and then study them side by side um, what you'll see uh, just to show the source again I'm going to navigate to my Google folder is uh, we did this uh, as a test the other day just to see what the difference was and if I go into this folder, new location, we uploaded the same picture twice. It was a picture of a castle. Uh, it's actually a castle uh, when I went on a trip to Italy a few years back. And the original picture is four meg. And so we started the app out in, in the full mode and you know we got the four megabyte file. But then I went into the app and edited it and I said, I want my images to be low res because of throughput or, you know, I'm on a cellular network. I don't always, you know, have the bandwidth or, or frankly, I don't need the, the high resolution image. And the second time we did it with setting it low, uh, AppSheet automatically downscales and, and down resolves the image, you know, to under 200 kilobytes. So that's a very handy uh, feature, again, on the options page. Um, where it gets very interesting is that the entire um, app itself, you don't actually have to store images in uh, Google Drive. We have support for what we call advanced storage integrations. Uh, these are not part of our free or pro plan. Um, so they, they are part of a business and enterprise subscription plans. Um, but if you do a, a, a Google search for this, you'll realize the storage can actually point at a database table or a Google file storage uh, or an, even an Amazon S3 bucket. So to show that, what I'm gonna do is I have it over here. Uh, here are a couple of pictures. <clears throat> Here's my cat and then also a picture of a beehive. And you can see there's only two records in my Google file storage location. But let's go ahead and add a new record and I'll call it third pick. And I'll just, again, pick something from my uh, uh, desktop here. It's a picture of a tree. And I will just immediately click Save and force that to change right away. When it's done, all I have to do now is go back to Google File Storage here and click Refresh. And we should now have a third record in the list. In fact, there it is, uploaded uh, today at 940. And there's our picture of bark. So <clears throat> huge feature. Why would you do something like this? Uh, I'll try to put this side by side here. Uh, <clears throat> maybe you want to run uh, image detection or a data science routine or some kind of uh, Google Vision AI on 
images, uh, you don't want to have to copy them from Google Drive to Google File Storage or, or you know, again, Amazon S3 or that kind of thing. So there's all kinds of reasons, you know, but beyond the scope of uh, this office hours, why you might choose to use advanced file storage, um, but very powerful um, and sort of easy to set up. Uh, one thing I recommend here is just search for app sheet uh, file storage, and you should start to get, uh, you know, here's one for the relational database link, um, and there's other links in here as far as finding that, or just go to help.appsheet.com and search in there. Um, one, I'll just gonna hint sort of Exercise, here's the article for, for Google Cloud Storage. In literally 30 seconds, I'm gonna hint at some other things you can do and leave them as searchable or uh, you know exercises for the reader. Uh, Jen, you mentioned annotations. So we have a sample app, uh, image annotations. At some point, somebody uploaded a picture of strawberries and you can now you know draw on them or add a you know, different color and what have you. And, save that information. So this is the beginnings of not just being able to upload an image, but also, you know, mark upon it. Um, another, you know, way to solve that problem, and this is a, another app that we have uh, publicly available, um, is images themselves can be a map. So in this case, we have a, a, a list of images that we've then put data and pinpoints on. So I can come into this image and click on various points on the image and come in and see information about that thing I clicked on. Uh, again, the, the reasons you would do this are very, very numerous, you know, far beyond the scope of, of anything we would have time for today. Uh, but the sky's the limit on that kind of thing. And so with those two sort of deeper end of the swimming pool, advanced extra credit items, I think I'll uh, sort of pause there and see if there's questions that have come in. Excellent. Uh, and just to re review one note that um, Ty mentioned earlier, those advanced um, data storage settings are something reserved for higher plan tiers. So if you are involved with an enterprise or business account, um, you have access to this. If you are not, send us an email and we can answer questions for you and, and provide more information uh, on that. Um, and I apologize, my furry co-host, I think, is upset there's a cat on the other line, Ty. So, <laughs> jealous. So, I think she's a little jealous we've been talking about cats, um, even if only for a moment today, because she's, she's yeah. Anyway, um, so a couple of questions we have. Uh, one is on dynamic locations. Can you uh, dive into that a little bit more, Ty? Sure. Yeah, let's uh, quickly go back and review that. So. Um, again, by way of backdrop, everything in AppSheet uh, throughout the product, you'll often find show ifs and expression editors. So here I am looking at a, a view and I can say, should this view be available? Uh, and I have access to all of the AppSheet uh, functions as far as the uh, you know expression assistant, as well as access to, to columns and information in my app. So the dynamic location item, Let's imagine, um, you know, we'll quickly play make believe here. Let's imagine uh, I want to use the year of my timestamp as a location. I should be able to do the following. I'm, I'm a huge fan of building this on the fly. So let's say year of timestamp should be a valid calc. Let's see what happens. There it is. And just to make sure, uh, app sheets happy with it. I'm gonna put it around text. Uh, so the text string of the year of the current timestamp. I'm gonna click save and click done and click save one more time. The reason I'm clicking save is because I then want to uh, show you that for the image I should now be able to instead of new location two, I should now be able to use a piece of data in this case year. Let's experiment and let's make sure this works. Life is good. Click save, click done, click save one last time. And let's upload a picture, right? So I'm gonna come back to my photo list and uh, we'll call this year test. And I'll just pick another B picture since it seems to be readily available to me. And in a moment, if we come back over to my app, 
sure enough, <laughs> the text of the year of my timestamp includes a comma. So that's what happened there. Uh, but this is an example of a dynamic field uh, being, or a dynamic location being driven by your data. So imagine this was the uh, first part of an email address minus the at domain.com part, or imagine this is a category like HR versus shipping versus sales. A very handy way to organize your, your content, you know, on Google Drive. So hopefully so, that was a cool. helpful, yeah. Yeah, I think, I, I think that was great. And, and um, let us know um, if you folks ha want us to dive a little deeper, but I, I think that's a great overview, Ty. Um, all right, so another dynamic question, not quite the same, but another dynamic question nonetheless. Uh, can we make dynamic pictures or information to show for different users in addition to get different uploads from different users for the same questions? Yeah, I'm going to do the second question first. Anytime, um, uh, let me pull up an article here. There is a um, article under app design in our help called the item detail data pattern. So I'm pulling this up and um, take a look at these scenarios on the screen. And by the way, I just you know did a search for app sheet space 101. It's a great way to kind of land on some good overview information. But the question I heard you ask, Jen, was I have a piece of rec a record or a piece of data and I want multiple people to upload photos to it. So it's, you know, my house and I want, you know, my kids to upload photos and I want to upload photos and I want my visitors when they come to my house to upload photos, but they all should be associated with that piece of information, which is my house. That's what we call, uh, you know, uh, this item detail pattern. You'll also hear this called a parent child relationship. The child in this uh, pattern is the photo, right? <clears throat> and the parent is the, the thing that we want to attach the photo to. Uh, so it's not necessarily uh, a photo or image specific item, but what I would do is, uh, you know, getting back to this original app, I'd have some second piece of tabular data called, you know, location. And I would, it would have a location ID. And in my photo data set, I won't, have time to do this right now, but I would have a column here called, you know, location, and I would create a different uh, item called a ref. I think you probably covered this last week with data structures, the yeah. ref type. Yeah. And so that's the answer to nothing prevents you, in other words, from having a whole bunch of photos associated with some larger construct or larger piece of, of data. And then the first question again was the first part of that. Uh, can we oh, make generating images was that yes. the, was that how you understand that question too jen can we make dynamic pictures uh, show for different users so yes um i would say generating for different users yeah the generation of an image there is some text to image um urls out there i'll have to track those down i, I don't have those handy but if the question is more like you know i want photo 18 to only be visible to a certain user and photo 3 to somebody else that's again all doable using the same expressions construct. A um, little more thought or detail might have to go into that. But in the abstract, that's definitely available as far as security and so forth. You might need, at a certain point, <clears throat> you might need a, a, a table just devoted to security if that's a concern for you uh, and have some kind of data driven you know, user security and, and user filtering. But definitely doable. Right. Excellent. Um, this this is a great question. So this is touching on the column types that we addressed earlier. Uh, for images to display in an email body, why does the column type have to be an image? Why does it not work when column types is file? Um, I probably because we haven't gotten to it yet. I mean, I, I I'm not quite sure. But what that person is referring to is if I were to go create a, a new workflow here. Um, Here's the workflow, and there's all kinds of things that we won't have time to cover here. But if you scroll down, there is a body field that expects uh, HTML. And so you can, in fact, do something like the following um, image source equals double quote, and then the special app sheet syntax, which is uh, bracket, bracket, or excuse me, uh, less than, less than bracket. And then the name of the field, which in this case is called image. Uh, and so forth. So 
Uh, this is considered a valid syntax for the email body. Uh, and their question was, why can't this be a file upload? And you know, I don't um, have a good answer to that. Uh, you know, a file field, as it were, um, something we could certainly look into. Um, don't have a, a ready answer, you know, on this uh, office hours. Well, the the one thing I would add, and um, James, if if we're misinterpreting your question, please let us know. Is with the intelligence of AppSheet, and by intelligence, we're referring to years of data that AppSheet has analyzed to be able to identify and extract um, what we believe your intention is with your data. So, and by that, um, I'm referring to kind of column type in this sense. Having, you know, image or whatnot, um, or picture or photo or whatever you choose to be your column type um, is going to help AppSheet be able to identify uh, what type of data you need to input into that area. And as, as Ty indicated, workflows and the content of workflows is a little little trickier. It's a little more complex, um, but but do pay special attention to your column structure. And as Ty um, mentioned, you know the content of the information that goes in your workflow is treated slightly differently than the content in your um, column types. Yeah, and the app itself too. And then yeah. if the question was, you know, hey, I need to attach a file to my email that I'm sending on a workflow, we do have a direct support for that in the right. area, towards the bottom called other attachments. So if you have a column whose type is file upload, you should refer to that here um, and, and not, you know, up above. So. Right. And we're getting into, for those that are, are new to the platform, we're getting into a little bit more of an advanced area. Um, this is behaviors and workflows. So if you want to send an email automatically based on certain rules or send content or things like that to other individuals, that's that's what we're addressing here. Um, we won't dive too much deeper into this, though, just because um, of time, for one. But two, I think it's a, a topic for a different day but feel free to go ahead and add a, a question about it and we can consider it for a future future session. Um, also worth pointing out our forums, maybe. I uh, wasn't sure if you were gonna do that, but very, very active, extensive forums. Any questions you have that we don't have time for today, definitely hop on over to community.appsheet.com and we or our community will, will help you out. Right, thank you for that, Ty. Um, all right, let's see if we can get to one. More. Um, so one more, not quite related to images, but I, th I think it's a good question. Let me just make sure I'm understanding this correctly. Actually. Do you want to read it out loud? Or? Yeah. Can we hide the app creator email address and modify the description about app image <clears throat> information on the privacy and compliance page? They're talking about the first time you hit an app. And the answer is, so I'm gonna re repeat the question back. Let's imagine I've deployed this app here called AppSheet Imaging Office Hours. And it's uh, I'm sending it out to my 2,000 of my coworkers. Um, every time they launch their phone, Android or iOS, and connect to the app, the first time they do that, not every time, they'll get a compliance screen. And that compliance screen is gonna say, Jen at AppSheet.com or Ty at AppSheet.com is the owner of this app. And if you click accept, they're going to be able to see your name and email and so forth. Um, and in fact, that's very much by design. It's part of our SOC 2 Type 1 compliance uh, that when you, you know, publish an app like this, you, you do need to allow your, your audience to opt into it. Um, right. there, are, there are some very, so that's a default message that we, we provide. Every app also lets you, the author, put in your own privacy policy. That'll also show up on that very same screen, and which is a very uh, important thing to point out, right? So um, the concept of an app owner is in fact a immutable sort of compliance concept. Um, we don't want apps to, to not have an identity, right, for, for SOC 2 compliance reasons, or, you know, more generally GDPR or CCPA compliance reasons, or, you know, all across the globe, this is becoming a concern. So short answer is no, you, you can't, you know, restrict that information. Uh, but what you can do is augment it uh, and provide, you know, additional information in the form of a, of a privacy policy. Great question, by the way. Thank you for that, Ty. Uh, all right, let's do, I think we've got time for one more. Um, and if we don't have time to answer this, Ty, we'll we'll follow up 
uh, with this question on the forum. Uh, can you explain how reset on edit works? I've had some difficulty to reset mm -hmm. yes, no button to yes or no after you select one of the options. I think they're referring to, I'll have to quickly hack up this app a little bit, <laughs> which is fine. So let's imagine I change my description field to, uh, you know, a yes, no, f um, or enum. I'll just choose an enum here of type A and type B. I'm not quite sure I'm going to get this uh, question right, but let's let's find out. Uh, if I click save, we'll see if something breaks because we've been messing around with this a little bit. Okay, we're good. So now description is A or B, but I can click B a second time and reset that. That possibly could have been the question they were asking. I wasn't sure. There's a different question they might be asking, which is um, the sync right here. I uh, can now reset the changes. That might have been the question they were asking as well. So I wasn't quite sure. But those are both things that are very sort of easy to experiment or, or test out. Maybe the person who was asking that could could follow up with us via email or or chat. But resetting a yes no is is as simple as clicking it again. You can also require one of these buttons to be selected. You know, you can make the the whole field you know uh, you know required with uh, the required column. So yeah, a lot of different answers to that question that I wasn't quite sure if we've. Uh, successfully answer that question so let do let us know if that's not the case yeah absolutely um all right uh ty thank you for your insight i'm going to take over from your screen great uh, really quickly as we wrap up here um so one announcement that i didn't get a chance to make yet um if this will display I'm not certain. I see that nobody's displaying, but keep cool. going. There, oh, we, there go. we go. Now, now I see it. Love technology. All right. So one announcement I did not make at the top um, of the webinar session is we're adding an advanced series. Uh, once a month, we'll take an hour to do an advanced, uh, a deeper dive on some advanced topics. Um, one of um, don't tell the engineers I said this, but one of my favorite engineers, Tony, will be joining me during this session next week. Um, it will be next Thursday for those that are based in um, in Europe or um, South America, North America, Latin America, that this half of the world. Um, it will be Friday if you're in Asia Pacific, Australia, New Zealand area. The session will be recorded and uploaded. Um, if you folks would like to attend or if you have areas of interest that you're just dying to learn more about, feel free to post a question on the forum or ping me directly and we will uh, dive in a little deeper on that topic, but we have some some great ideas surrounding that. Um, so yeah, that, that was the, the big announcement um, I forgot to mention at the top. But aside from that, um, next step steps for all of you folks. Make sure you're registered on the community forum, which is something Ty mentioned just a moment ago. Um, let us know how we can improve these sessions or provide better content or information for you all. And start using what you learned. Um, images and videos, Ty mentioned this before, are by far um, the most referenced area of curiosity and interest. Um, so we hope we gave you all some great foundational tricks and tips to be able to execute on for this. And that's all we have for you today. Um, Ty, any closing notes? No, it was such a pleasure. Um, I love these sessions. So uh, thanks so much to everybody for attending. And hopefully uh, this has been helpful. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. And stay safe out there. Um, stay healthy. And we shall talk to you all soon.